Welcome back to another episode of the Subs in 15 podcast where we talk about four different sports in 15-minute segments. Today, uh, I'm Derek Daniel, your host, along with Zach Combest, our editor-in-chief, and our broadcast director, Ryan Gum. Um, today, we're going to kick it off with the NBA. Ryan, would you like to start us off here? Uh, yeah, it was a really fun night, fun week in NBA playoff action. Um, I think we should start off with Memphis. Because we just saw one of the posters of the century from John Morant mm -hmm. jumping from what looked like the free throw line, just yamming on people, ending careers in Memphis. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Wolves blow another fourth quarter lead. Um, and that series just keeps providing the entertainment we thought it would. More mm -hmm. than we usually see from 2-7 matchups. So that, yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, that was big. Who did he dunk over? Was I don't Beasley remember. It was... Probably it, it was, was ridiculous. It was crazy. It was. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. But that was a game changer for them because the fourth quarter, T Wolves they struggled, and you know Memphis got the win there, which I think they'll win the series now. But um, just John Morant, we talked about all year. He is the game changer. He's my MVP. Mm -hmm. I will say that when Anthony Edwards hit that three with like you know three or four seconds left, I was like, okay, we'll probably go to overtime. Mm -hmm. And then even at the end, like the Grizzlies didn't look like they had a good play drawn up or at least it didn't come to fruition but then job manages to find the ball and then scores a layup mm -hmm. like, i don't understand how in the final three seconds you let the best player get the ball mm -hmm. and then let him get in the paint yeah another thing that yeah. hurts if you're the wolves cat showed up he actually showed up produced had 28 and 12 and you couldn't pull it out man like like mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards has been leading this team the entire this entire series, right? And I think that this more than proves Anthony Edwards as a star. This proves that this isn't Cat's team. This never was. You know, you know, like this is this is Anthony Edwards' team. Mm, I don't know. I respect that you disagree, but I Cat's I, been doing it a lot longer. Yeah, he's been doing yes. it longer. But where have they been with when it was just Fair. him? It Fair. was nowhere. Mm -hmm. And this series is three two going into a game six against the two seed in the West, and the one guy that's been showing up. And his name is not Cat. I promise you. His name is Carl. His name is not Carl Anthony Towns. So, mm -hmm. I'm a big Anthony Edwards guy. Are the you? guy no. he does nothing but crack me up and hoop. So he's he's a uh, he's got the gum seal of approval. I love him. I finish. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. But I mean, Grizzlies though. John Moran had almost a triple double. Mm -hmm. Thirty points, fifteen rebounds. Um, what else? Actually, thirteen rebounds, nine assists. I mean, that's hard to beat. Yeah. Besides that, I mean, Desmond Bain, 25 points there. Mm -hmm. That was a good performance, but it was a, a good matchup there. Let's move on, though, to some other ones. Uh, let's talk about, let's see, Bucks, Bulls. I don't want to talk about it. Come I on. I really don't, we man. Got to like, now. So the Bucks, we they lose Chris Middleton, and I really and thought they get this, better. I really yeah. thought this was our chance. How do I word this? To stem the tide. I didn't think we'd be up 3-1. I thought we'd mm -hmm. be tied 2-2 going into Milwaukee with some momentum, even if we mm -hmm. lost game four. Because I thought we'd take game three coming off of that monumental win in game two and the injury to Chris Middleton. Thought it would take some time. But Giannis has been the best player in the world, and we we can't do anything. Like I, I, I don't know who... who like I, I watch these games, and my brain... It hurt so much because I really thought this was it. I really mm -hmm. did. I thought we had a good shot. I felt like of any team, we had one of the best because we had we have so much offensive firepower, a good coach. We're kind of deep because we're somewhat healthy. No, no, we lost in extraordinary fashion each each game, games three and four, and it, it just hurts. And on that note, I, I would like to move on. <laughs> uh, I, I did hear, though, Zach Levine is out, though. That's why I didn't want to. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, so it that's, just gets worse. It's getting worse for you guys. Yeah, Caruso's on concussion protocol in his day to day. Might not play. And then Zach, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what that means. It really worries me because contract negotiations haven't been going well, and there have been talks. So he wants, from what I saw, the supermax. And the Bulls are kind of like, no, eh, we don't know if we want to give that to you, even though you might deserve it. What not? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like. It's all subjective, so, you know, do we give it to him? Most teams wouldn't. We maybe should because he's helped us get to where we are. We are, But it worries me, him going on health and safety, because what if he's using this as a way to be like, yo, I'm done. Like, like we're losing this series. I'm out of here. I'm not going to play in this game and get hurt, whatever. 
So I, I don't know. I, no, there could be no credence to that. And I really hope there's not. I really hope that he wouldn't do that. But this might be his way of forcing himself out, which mm -hmm. really would suck. Yeah, that would be, that'd be really unfortunate for you. We, got, we finally got good again. <laughs> um, the Bucks are 12 and a half points favorites tonight. That's And they're going to cover. Yeah, probably. They really will. Um, yeah. Moving on, the Warriors and the Nuggets, game five. Warriors are up 3-1. I, I mean, I think we all see this finishing here tonight. That one will actually be fun to watch, though. So. You think so? Yeah. Like, I, I think Jokic shows up, and he's got enough of a, of a talent around him, even with, with the injuries, that he can put up a fight. Like, he's the MVP. Uh, so, like, I, I I trust Jokic to at least make it a game. Uh, one thing that surprised me the most about this playoffs is that going in, the West was so far apart that, you know, we were all, here's your, you know, three-cut favorites. It was mm -hmm. going to be your son, the Suns, the Warriors, and the Grizzlies. Everything's close on the West side. Mm -hmm. And yep. then you move to the East, and you had Boston 4-0 Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Miami 4 uh, four one, one yep. uh, the Hawks. Yeah, the only close series over there, in my opinion, is Toronto and Philadelphia, and that was who not we even thought really would close, be a four zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow Toronto has clawed their way back to make mm -hmm. this a series. I think one of the more interesting storylines to look at is those two teams that have moved on are both very they're built very similarly, very defensive minded, led by their star. Um, Trey Young, I was reading, he averaged 28 points in the regular season and in the postseason averaged like 15 because that defense from Miami, yep. like that's ridiculous. So mm -hmm. it would be fun to watch, and obviously I don't even have to go into anything about Boston stifling Kevin Durant. So it's just you wonder what that would look like. I truly believe after tonight the winner of the second round matchup between Milwaukee and Boston will be the Eastern Conference champions. I just, I can't see Miami. They will beat, Miami will beat whoever comes out of the, the Philadelphia Toronto series. I can't see Miami in the Eastern Conference finals beating one of those Boston or Milwaukee. I just can't. Cause you got, in my mind, the best overall team in the league in terms of like, like not as in like most talented, but as in best offensively and defensively, like the best on both ends, best two way team or the best player in the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think, I, I highly doubt Miami, who's a great defensive team, will be able to beat one of those two. Or do you think maybe the fact that they have to slug it out in this second round, does Miami, like, you know, maybe roll over Philadelphia and then catch them, you know, Boston or Milwaukee or Chicago? Uh, we're going to assume Milwaukee here. Yeah. Do you think they catch Milwaukee or Boston, you know, coming off the back foot of a, a seven-game series? No, because think about it. Whatever Miami can do, either Milwaukee or Boston can, and they have. And so you look at it, right? Both of those two teams can defend. Not maybe not exactly like Miami, but they can defend enough. And both have a star that can match up and produce more than Jimmy. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. But if it comes down to Boston and Milwaukee playing each other, who do you think? Boston would come out on that. If Kirst Middleton's still hurt, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think Boston definitely. Um, like I said, like Jason Tatum and, and Giannis is going to be fun. That's oh, going to yeah. be that's going to be a fun series to watch, um, especially with with Tatum going at KD the way he did. Mm -hmm. And I know that's completely different circumstances, different situations to how KD and Giannis will play. Um, it'll be a lot tougher against Giannis, but it's going to be a lot of fun watching those two. But I think if Chris Middleton's not going to be healthy, that defense is so good in Boston that they will not stop but limit to an extent something from the milwaukee side and i think that they get it in like six okay i can see that yeah let's see um so we talked about let's go to the west now talk mm -hmm. about the suns i mean they continue it's a three two series right there pelicans are giving them a fight it's a lot closer than it's, i think any of us thought um mm -hmm. but last night you know they handled business chris paul and uh deandre ayton yep mm-hmm I mean, they were they were kind of like the catalyst of the team last night. I think Chris Paul had double digits and assists. You know, and he just kind of took the floor general role last night. And then, you know, obviously with Devin Booker out, we're not sure when he'll return. But I think if they want to make a deep run, he's got to be back, at least no, for the next mm -hmm. series. Yeah, I, I think I think they'll be able to handle the Pelicans, maybe in seven. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But I think definitely for the next series, you got to have him back. 
Yeah, I mm-hmm. think one point to be made is we talked about Devin Booker being more, should be more highly appreciated on the MVP rankings. And I think this just proves it because we saw what the Suns looked like without Chris Paul and they were still mm-hmm. the Suns. Now we're seeing, and I know one's late regular season, the other's playoffs, and though you can make the argument there, but now we see it without Devin and just Chris. And I don't want to take anything away from, from New Orleans because they've played well. They're built very well. they got their two stars, CJ and Brandon Ingram. They've got mm-hmm. their two young guys. Uh, I can't think of their names, actually. Let me look at them. Uh, da, da, Herb Jones and Jose Alvarado. Those two are playing out of their minds. They're, they're going at Chris Paul, making it difficult for him. But then they also have the perfect, like, floor like fillers and those guys Mm -hmm. that help with team chemistry like Giannis Valanciunas and Larry Nance Jr. So if only they had Zion, yeah, this team could probably be in the five, six range and competing for a second round series, you Mm -hmm. know? So I I don't want to give New Orleans like I want to give them more credit because they have them being built the way they are and then playing as well as they are is why they're here. But also I think a major point has to be said that Devin Booker needs more appreciation. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Just because we see what this team looks like without him. Yeah, I mean, I think he'll go probably to seven at this point. But like we're talking about, Devin Booker has to be back. But Bridges, Chris Paul, you know, Cameron Payne, those guys, they have to step up if mm-hmm. Booker is not available because them three guys could be the game changer for him. If one of them struggles, say Chris Paul struggles in a game, you know, scores 10 points and single digits assist, it's going to be a loss. Mm-hmm. It, it just will. Um, without him being the floor general, they're going to struggle. So I think that would be the biggest thing. Yeah, and assuming that they move on, looking at their next series, you're going to have Utah or you're going to have Dallas, right? And, I mean, their last game, Utah scored 77 points. So I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Right. Not sure what went wrong offensively that night, but – I, you know, I think this kind of, like, Luka coming back, I think it's kind of boosted the Mavs a little bit to, like, you know, kind of get that second wind. So let's say Devin Booker's not back. Mavs move on because they're up 3-2 right now. Mm-hmm. Do we see the Mavs taking that series? Or do we – do you think the Suns can still manage to, you know, It depends on how late Devin Booker comes back. If it's, like – I'm saying even if Devin Booker comes back in a game five, that series will be tied. 2-2. Two, two. Like, I really do. Like, a game five, mm-hmm. Devin Booker comes back, it's the Suns. But if Devin Booker comes back any later than that, no. Like, if it, if it even if Devin Booker comes back and it's 3-2, I think that... Because all Luka needs is one game. And I, like, I, Luka's one of, one of my favorite players to watch in the league just because he's so, like, he's got that fire. A lot of people say he complains, and I will agree. But he's... He's got this fire in him, and the way that this team is built, it's built for him to succeed. Jalen Brunson has been playing out of his mind. Uh... Spencer Dinwiddie, he was playing real hot when he got traded, and now he's taking more of a backseat to let those guys that are hot, and those are the kind of guys you need, like talk about glue guys. Mm -hmm. So I just, I really think they're built. If they get the right matchup, i.e. Phoenix, or even if they get New Orleans, if New Orleans somehow pulls that out, (laughs) they're they're going to the Western Conference Finals, and we'll see them probably face the Warriors. Um, But, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I would like to see that, actually. Like, I would love to see late postseason Luka. Mm-hmm. I, just to see what that looks like, 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 I, does he fold? I don't think so. But exactly how high do, or how bright does he shine? That's a big question. Yeah. So you're you're giving the Warriors over the Grizzlies already? Yeah. That's that's bold. I am. I uh, I love. Yeah. Listen, the way they're built, love <laughs> them, right? Like we just talked about, they can have five guys in double digits any given night, right? Great defensively, mm-hmm. very deep. This is new to them. Uh, they're struggling with the Wolves. The Warriors would throttle the Wolves. I'm sorry. Like, mm-hmm. they can't even, they can't win four or five games against a team that they are head and shoulders better than. Because, in my mind, they're not used to this. Not to, the, not to say the Wolves are, but, like, when, tough, when things get tough, I'm taking a team that has won championships, has that establishment of kind of the precedent over the, over the Grizz. I do think that'd be a fun series. You want me to be real here? I can see that going, like, I can see the Warriors winning that in five or six. Like, like it would be, I think it would be, if the Warriors stay healthy, I don't think it'd be close. Not necessarily. I think the, the, mm-hmm. the Met, I think Grizzlies get one or two. I can see that, yeah. yeah. But I still got the Grizzlies, though, winning it. Jaw oh, Morant's just that'd be awesome. too electric. Luka and Jaw, Western Conference Finals? Most good. improved. 
He's yeah. most improved. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. won that award. I so. I agreed with uh with uh Draymond on this though. It should have been Jordan Poole. That means playing that at an all pro really level. Good. Yep. All pro level. I agree because like Jaw we knew Jaw was gonna do this. Like he kind of showed it last year, wasn't mm-hmm. as much. But like Jordan Poole came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It was like he shines mm-hmm. so much that there there's like rumblings that Clay might be out to make room for Jordan because he's playing so well. Yeah. So well, Clay struggled. He's been injured a bunch. So mm-hmm. put in the new young guy. You now, know? if there's any credence to that, who knows? But mm-hmm. all right. Well, that is all the time we have for NBA this week. Next, we'll have the NFL, and we're back for the NFL segment. Uh, we're gonna kick it off. Packers and Raiders are in talks to try and deal Darren Waller to Green Bay. Ryan, you were saying you thought I'd be happy about this. Uh, I'm not. I don't think he is that much of an improvement on Robert Tunyon to where I think we need to go out and get a tight end. I think we just need to get receivers. All right. I Hear me out here. Okay. I'm hearing. You, not only, number one, can you use both? Okay. But two, from you Packers fans, all I hear is, we don't get Rodgers' help. We don't get Rodgers' help. The we Packers don't. say, you know what, we're going to go get help. And what happens? Don't. As a Packers fan, you're like, no, we don't want that guy. We don't want him. Like, Listen. what is wrong with you? Okay. Listen, you complain, As- the Packers are like, yes, we'll finally do what we've needed to done for a long time. And your first response isn't, thank God, they're trying to do what we need to do to win. You're like, we don't want that guy. Like, okay, let me. You, un- you unthankful fan, you. What is wrong with let you? Let me put it to Listen. you. Listen, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear anything. Let me put it to you this way. Okay, all right. All right, As all right. a Bengals fan, what did you say for years? We need an offensive line. We need an offensive line. We went we out, got. draft. You all went out, drafted a wide receiver, and everybody's up in arms. We don't need Jamar yes, Chase. Because, yes, and then he because took we you to a line. title. You need weapons on the perimeter. You need people that can make plays with the ball. They're trying to get that. The reason that it's different is it's Cincinnati. We drafted a, something, a position that yes, we like. I'm happy we got in hindsight, but in the time we didn't necessarily need. We don't need a tight end. You need anything that can <laughs> that can catch a ball. That's what you need. But Dude, we, you, listen, unless he's going to start running go routes, we don't need him because we have Aaron Jones out of the backfield and Tunyon can run a five yard out. All we have is Alan Lazar and Sammy Watkins. We're screwed. Listen, if we <laughs> get, oh, all we have Tunyon's not healthy. Who are we going to throw to? If we now get, all of a sudden it's Darren Waller and you're like, no, no, we don't. We got so many. Uh, like ah. <laughs> Look, if, ah, if we get Traylon Burks in the draft like we're projected to. I hope you don't. <laughs> I hope Eli Apple is your star cornerback. All right, fine. <laughs> so ungrateful. You're the ungrateful one. How am I ungrateful you, that so I don't? we were talking before the segment, and he said that, and I had everything I just said, like, <laughs> like built up instantly, and I was like, I'm going to wait for the recording. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Right, moving on. I don't think it'll happen, though. I don't hope Derek so. Carr said there's no chance that trade will happen. I hope I hope it does. You know. And I hope, I he, I hope he plays out of his mind. Exactly. Yep. Just so that I can pull this up and have it as a sound bite for every episode. <laughs> to be like, I don't want Darren Waller. I don't want him. That's going to that's gonna be, I don't want that's him. Gonna be a sound bite. All right, moving on. Uh, Melvin Gordon re-ups with Denver on a one-year deal. How much did he get? Five mil. Up to five mil. Too bad. It's not a bad contract. Yeah. For a year. Yeah, he's a decent running back. He's, I mean, he's getting mm-hmm. a little older. Who's their... Oh, why can't I think of his name? Their rookie back. That well, he, like, split with last year. Uh, I'm not sure. Shares carries with... Uh, Javante. Javante yeah, Williams. Yeah, Javante yeah, Williams. That's, yeah. that's, it, that's, it, that's it. There you go. Yeah. I like Javante Williams better. To be honest that's with. probably... They probably resigned him to a one-year deal just to have him as a backup. Like, yeah. like I, like I can't. I mean, maybe some split like 70-30, mm-hmm. but more of him in a backup yeah. veteran role. Williams was good. I mean, he was second-round pick in last year's draft, all rookie team. So, I mean, that's pretty nice. He's not a bad get. I yeah, like him. He's not bad. Yep, so I think that'll be I good. Think, yeah, I think they need to keep him. Like, yes, Melvin Gordon's been around a while. He mm-hmm. knows like the league, but he's twenty-nine years old. He's getting to the end of his career. Running backs don't last that long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the only ones that like somehow Frank Gore lasted like 14 seasons or something ridiculous, but like he was a beast. I he think was. Mm-hmm. most of them only last four or five years. Yeah, he, well, 
he got knocked out by Darren Williams and retired. So mm-hmm. Frank Gore, and he was ne- he. I'm not going to slander Frank Gore because I actually really enjoyed watching him play. Frank Gore's an outstanding running back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, other news before we get to draft stuff. Kadarius Tony, the wide receiver. I'll take him. <laughs> what? Give him to him me. Now? What? He's okay. good. A 22 year old. We need receivers. I, I don't know if he's going to be 23 when he turns 23, if he is already 23, but he, he just completed his rookie year mm-hmm. with 39 receptions at 420 yards, zero touchdowns, just over or just under 11 yards uh, per reception. I mean, I think he's okay, but here, here's my thing. If that team's already dealing in what, like, what's the reason? You know, like, is it just because they have so many other weapons, or is there like an underlying reason that they want him got him out? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he's a little injury prone. He was hurt for the most of the back half of the season. Like, mm-hmm. didn't play much in the first half. Came in for like three games, shined, and then got hurt. Yeah. So I understand, but also here's my reasoning for wanting him because we dealt Valdez Scantling to Kansas City. Right. Then you got same. We block. need. Yeah, but we need a deep threat. We need the guy that's just going to. It's almost like Tyreek Darren Waller is a six foot six, two hundred twenty five pound. He's not going to get down the field can, in four that seconds. Can, that though. can catch over people, isn't that? Yeah. Huh? Anyway, um, other news: <laughs> Bears wide receiver Byron Pringle not even played a single game for Chicago. Down in Florida, gets arrested for reckless driving on a suspended license. Um, what are you doing, dude? I don't yeah. know. Like that. That's our last non-draft news, but it's just <laughs> this guy's not even like. What? He he gets out from under the thumb of Big Red Andy Reid, and he just he doesn't know how to do like what to do with himself. Oh man! Yeah. Like it's one thing if you're like a star receiver. Yeah, he's a, it's, he's, it's, a, he's, a, he's like third on the depth. Byron Pringle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel Never bad for him. I feel bad for Justin Fields and that coaching staff that's coming in trying to set this culture and trying to find any form of weapon and a guy that you're supposed to be throwing to throughout the season before mm-hmm. you even get a chance to mess with him does something stupid. So, yeah. yeah you that, know, honestly, he might have been their wide receiver one because I think Al Lazard, or not Al Lazard, Allen Robinson's gone. He is gone. He would have been, I th- I don't think he would have been one. I'm not for sure who's going to be one, but he probably, they were aiming for him to probably be like a two. So, like. What, are the, what do the Bears have now? Not much. They have David yeah. Montgomery. Yeah. They, they, t- they, they dealt, cut Cohen. They cut Cohen. Yeah. Dealt Ty, uh, Ty Montgomery. Got rid of Allen Robinson. Mm-hmm. What do you have left in that backfield or the receiving core? We have Justin Fields. Just I don't from care. the local yeah. Bears fan. Okay, look, I will. Like the Bears are ri- are rivals. They need Kadarius Tony more than we do. They need Darren Waller more than we do. If you keep trying to make a case of the <laughs> why you don't need case. this guy, <laughs> we don't need trying. Darren Waller. He's not like the case look, isn't good. We have a top seven tight end. You can use both. You do realize this, right? Like, you, it's not just one or the other. You, ha- there are systems to have. But I'm not arguing this anymore because because <laughs> I'm right and you're being so ungrateful. Anyway, uh, more news as I get us back on track again from Darren Waller. Uh, the Panthers will not trade up for, or will not, well, they will try, they're trying to trade up to six. That's not what I meant to say. Yeah. They're not going to trade for Baker Mayfield before the first round. Um, Panthers draft day stuff. What do you guys think of a uh, bonfire of a, of a franchise right now? Trying to make draft day moves. Yeah. They had a mess. I mean... Here's my thing. So if they're not trading for Baker and they're trying to trade up, are they going after a quarterback? No. There's not. There's not a no so quarterback. Then why does in this it matter that they enough. didn't want to trade for Baker? They're probably thinking we want to use that first round talent to build around Baker. Yeah. But so, we're not getting Baker. No, no. They're saying they won't trade for Baker until after the first round. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. Get they you now. they won't you. trade for Baker before the first round of tomorrow's draft. So they're thinking we're going to use whatever talent we can get from the first round, then try to deal for Baker and hopefully have both. I mean, if they get Jamison Williams from Alabama. That could be oh, that's one. huge. That's huge. Yeah. That man's in, that's, he's not a real talent. If the Browns mm-hmm. think they're getting more than a second and a third, they're ridiculous. Even that sounds like it might be st- like cutting it over the edge for Baker. Not to say, like, like I respect Baker, but he's in. he's been injury prone, and that franchise gave up on him. So if they're, if that franchise is trying to get a haul for him, they are mistaken. I don't think they'll get much of anything if they're going to ask for a steep price. Yeah. Okay, but here's my question. You have arguably the second, I'm going to go with second best running back in the league at Christian McCaffrey. Why not get that man a better O-line and go after someone like Evans? Well, at six, there are certain guys that you would hope would fall. Um, 
Trayvon Walker, right, is projected on, according to CBS as number one. I know he took over for Adrian Hutchinson as the number one in Vegas, um, but he's a DL from Georgia, really talented guy. Um, if this, according to CBS, is correct, there will be a few linemen like uh, at six. Akeem mm-hmm. uh, Akungwu will be have, have gone at five if he falls one pick. Other guys that might be available as I scroll through here. Evan Neal. Find, Evan Neal. Evan Neal at 10 yeah. for here. Like, that's a huge pickup. Like Evan, Cross. Evan Neal's a guy that could go one. Like, this draft is so weird that it's like, it depends on who's picking where and how mm-hmm. guys would be valued. So, I uh, like, there there are, like, I feel like at six, there are more than a few linemen available. Like, I know you said Jameson Williams. That'd be huge for Baker. But also, an Evan Neal would be big too, you know right. that. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I like that. That's why they want up at six. Is they want one or both. Um, but yeah, that that'd be um, that'd be nice. Right now, the according to this, the Panthers would get Evan Neal at ten. But like I said, it's so like there is no telling who's going to go where in this draft. So it makes sense wanting to dra- to trade up and not deal that pick for. Okay, so here's they, my question: If they trade up and get six, and then have ten. You get one or both if you which can. Which one? Yeah, like mm-hmm. which one do which you, one you go for first? Which one do yeah. you go for first to guarantee you get? Personally, Carolina already kind of has some receivers. Like Robbie Anderson's not bad. Um, they they've got enough weapons with Christian McCaffrey and Robbie Anderson that they need protection more valued mm-hmm. than more. But like, especially knowing that, Baker's injury prone. I yeah. say that, but like the Bengals didn't do that, and you saw where they went. Like yeah. they went strictly weapons, and they won. And so that could be something I could. Easily see now. I don't think Jameson Williams is anywhere near Jamar Chase, and they're not in a position to where their quarterback is saying that that's who they want. So it's it's much different situation. I would go protection just because of everything you said. Like I, I want Baker as my quarterback if I'm the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Robbie Anderson has said no, but he's better than anything on our roster, right? He's better than anyone we can draft. So I want a Baker, and I'm going for protection. And then if if you can keep ten, because I I don't know how you, I don't know if you can keep ten and get six. If you can, great. Um, but who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows? The Panthers are in a really rough spot. Yep. Let's look at the number one pick though. Who you guys think will go to the Jags? I think they take Vegas. Who's Vegas has said? Um, I I love the idea of a. Uh, well, let me put it this way. I do have a favorite in this draft. Kevon Thibodeau is, I, I think he should be number one. I think he is just, from everything I've seen, mm-hmm. he looks like the most well-rounded talent. I just felt like he was on an Oregon team that underperformed, so he kind of got labeled. And I get, you know, he might not have done as well as some others. But I feel like in terms of just NFL readiness, I feel like he's better than Adrian Hutchinson. Um, I feel like he's on par, if not at the exact same level as Trayvon Walker. And I feel like his ceiling's higher. So I, I like I like Kevon Thibodeau. That's just my personal opinion. Like yeah. people will probably call that trash. I really don't care. That's who I would take number one. Um, but like, you can't go wrong with a Trayvon Walker if that's what you need. It, that's where that's where I'll go. I I don't think they go with Thibodeau or Walker because I don't think they need they don't need an edge rusher because they have Josh Allen still. He's pretty like he's still one of the best in the league. Um, D backs. They could use help. They could use help. Mm-hmm. I think they go Derek uh, Stingley Jr. Because since yeah. Jalen Ramsey's left, they have been horrendous at cornerback. Mm-hmm. So, like, that secondary has not been good since Jalen Ramsey left. Mm-hmm. And it needs a lot of help. Is Darren St- I mean, Derek Stingley a guy that, that should go one, though? Because I'm looking uh, he's, at this. He's three. I know, I know, I know, yeah. uh, according to CBS. And oh, I, yeah, he's quarter three. Yeah. According to CBS, he's three. I, so. I know I know what I just said, that it kind of whatever, but there's still, like, in my mind, Trayvon Walker, Thibodeau, and even Hutchinson, in my mind, are still, like, those. if you see one of those three guys on the board, that's still talent over need. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like everything else in this draft is straight up need because it's all dependent. Like, this, this is such a weird draft. But those three, in my mind, are... Is that like a Detroit, Penae Sewell? Kind of thing. Kinda, yeah. Whereas, like, he's so good, we have to draft yes. him. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And so I feel like if if the Jags want a Stingley, they can pull something similar to what the NBA does, and I know that they kind of do in the NFL, but tra- but trade down and get some talent as well as getting the fourth, fifth pick, and still get Derek Stingley. Like, because that's that's how that's how high those other three will go, in my mind. Yeah, I'm liking those Sauce Gardner from Cincy. Yeah. What yeah. a cool name, Sauce. Uh, I think 
I think he could go first, like you said, with the defense. But also, this one I'm looking at here from NFL.com, they're saying he could go fourth, the Jets. I mean, he'll be a top five either way, I think. Um, but that would be, I think that would be a good pickup for them. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I agree. According to CBS, Ahmad Gardner or Sauce Gardner, as you mm -hmm. said, it's so cool, um, goes seventh to the Giants, who, as we said, is shopping around one of their receivers. So, yep. yeah. Interesting stuff. And I think the biggest news that we need to talk about to finish up with is Pittsburgh is projected to take Malik Willis over Kenny Pickett. I understand. I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. But the thing is, though, Kenny Pickett on this one, he's projected to go 32nd to the Lions. I don't know if you can wait which, that long. Which mock draft is that? I'm looking at one from NFL Charles Davis. Mm. This has Desmond Ritter falling 26th. I don't even think Kenny Pickett goes in the first round in CBS. No, he doesn't. Wow. It's surprising, honestly. I don't know, man. I don't know. If Desmond Ritter's if Desmond Ritter falls in twenty six, do you take him? I think twenty six. Because the Pittsburgh oh, has twenty. I think Desmond Ritter is a better prospect than Malik. Or or Kenny? Out of the three, who's your favorite? I think I okay, it's tough. Cause once again, I think all three of them are about the same in terms of like like I think Ooh, it's tough because from the Pittsburgh perspective, I have said they should take Kenny Pickett because he's a he's a home kid. Mm -hmm. Like that's where he's from, and I don't think you're missing as much. And I feel like, I feel like of the three, Malik is the most like he's the one you're gonna have to sit and let play behind somebody and learn the most. Yep. While I think Ritter and Pickett are the two that are most like game day ready. So I I would go Pickett or especially if you're if you're Pittsburgh and you can't get a Garoppolo or you can't get a Mayfield, you want somebody that can come in to, to run the ball like like what um, Tom, uh, Mike Tomlin wants. So I, I would pick I would pick Ritter or or Pickett just mm -hmm. because like I said those two are so ready game one and in the right system I think either one of them could be really good. Yep. Yeah, I but like Pickett the most out of them. Outside of that, outside of Pittsburgh, I don't know. It's really like it's a matter of who needs what. I think the Lions take one. Yeah, definitely. I, right, like on mm -hmm. CBS, they they uh, or well, no, on uh, your mock yep. draft, uh, uh, NFL say, one here. Yep. Say who? Say it's from again, because it's Charles Davis. Charles Davis. Thank yep. you. Um, that wouldn't be a bad fit. It would just mm -hmm. it'd be another Lions quarterback to learn from Jared Goff. I mean, that's Is that really who you want. To learn? Not really, but you know, he's well, a veteran. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. We'll we'll just have to see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have to see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll talk next week about it. All right, and that is all the time we have for the NFL this week. Moving up to MLB and college baseball next. And we're back with the MLB and college baseball section. And we're going to start off with Angel Hernandez and Kyle Schwarber with the Phillies and the Brewers. And what was uh, statistically proven the worst call in three years on a strike three call in the bottom of the ninth. Zach, what's your... What's your take on yeah, it? Yeah, Angel Hernandez, the home plate ump. God, terrible calls. So many, more than one. It's different if it's just one call. But when it's like four or five in a row, like, come on. And he always it does that. The whole, like, not just this game, but other games as well. But in a one nothing game, bottom of the ninth, you got to be better than that. How can you? How can you do that? No. I don't know, man. It, is it weird? Does it seem like officials in all sports have just been really bad? Yep. Like, like really bad like in the three mm -hmm. major professional sports we cover i just feel like there's so many stories and that's probably just normal but like just like i know i've made the joke i'm not a baseball guy i really am trying to get into it and so i was telling our guys beforehand that um even as someone who doesn't really know the sport that well mm -hmm. like when i was watching and i saw that ball just like teeter out of the box and to literally like it looked like it hit the like didn't even hit it like outside the bottom right corner mm -hmm. on the screen and like yeah. like just like maybe what eight inches above home plate. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. So your strike zone, a true strike zone is what I'm going to say because everyone's is different. And well, before you say this, give your give your credentials as to why you know this. Oh, I'm a high school umpire for the state of Kentucky. And you've been doing it for a while. I've been doing this for... I, just, I wanted to get yeah. that clear. I've been doing this for seven years. Yeah, you're not you're not like just somebody who's <laughs> like, oh yeah, strike zone. Yeah. You, you actually, like that's your job. Yeah. You do this. Okay, just so, wanted to clear the air. Um, the, a true strike zone is the plate which is 17 inches, and then is the bottom of your 
letters on your jersey to the top of your kneecaps is a true strike zone. Obviously, everyone's is a little different. Um, because of height. Mm-hmm. Height and yeah. everything, you know, like that yeah, plays a factor. Um, and the umpire strike zone is different. You know, it depends on, like, what, you know, how they're standing, whatever, different things like that. Angel Hernandez, and I don't – I'm going to shout out the guys that run this Twitter. They're uh, ump scorecards on Twitter. Angel Hernandez had a 77% strike call accuracy, with the average being 88%. Ooh. Uh, 11 out of 48 called strikes were balls. Hmm. That's rough. I don't – so basically, essentially one in four pitches – this man was wronged. Mm-hmm. Give at, or take. Yeah, give or yeah. take. Yeah, but, like, right. at any other level, this man is probably not being invited back right. to a ballpark. Just just I looking at not. that, especially with what you just said, like, bottom letters to knees. Yeah. This ball that was called a strike late, like, bottom nine, is at his shin. Mm-hmm. Like, legitimately, like, at his shins, the top of his shins. So, I guess, whatever. But, like, it's at his shins. So yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it was an absolute awful call, and like it's it's one thing to like have an awful call, and then it's another thing to be statistically proven the worst call in three years. Yeah, to where you have no excuse. Yeah, that is bad. I just want to give credit to the hissy fit Kyle Schwarber threw as well afterwards. Like much deserved like, yeah. credit, but oh, yeah. it, it was it was so interesting. And it was like <laughs> my favorite part about that is like he wasn't like you've been screwing me all night or you've been screwing my team all night. He's like you've screwed everyone tonight. Mm-hmm. Like it's normally you know it's like if it's a player you know arguing it up. He's like, hey man, this is like third time tonight on me. Mm-hmm. He was like, no, both sides have been screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. It's an issue. It's really an issue. And I think Joe Girardi was like, I think he got asked about uh, automatic umpires, robot umpires, whatever mm-hmm. it is, like after the game. He's like, why not? Like, At this point, I think they should. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it's the way the game is nowadays. I just, I just don't know if I want to open that can of worms. Yeah. Like, because, like, if you do that there. Because you already have the strike zone, though. They show you on TV what the strike zone is. Yeah. And then maybe, it's, maybe, but. It's you know, already been used. I just for hate them. I just hate the thought of, like, Cause that's part of the game is human error. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like I get like I I've gone on many a rant as people have known <laughs> that have watched, especially relating to this p- past season Super Bowl. But that's part of the game. That's what makes it fun. Is that like I hate umpires. I hate officials deciding games. But that mm-hmm. adds that whole level of drama. If that doesn't exist, you know, it takes away a, a large faction. That's something that makes that makes sports so unique. Is that they're human drama. Like, like I don't. Uh, Michael Wilbon was one who said it. Uh, I can't remember exactly what his quote said, but he would say, "I'm not just a fan of sports. I'm I'm a fan of of, of the human, the human drama involved mm-hmm. in it." And I think that's a perfect way to to sum up sports lovers. So I don't know. Like, yeah, I can understand it, and it would probably be like better for the sport. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I think it's something they could test out in minor leagues. Yeah, but think, single me, A, double A, test me, it out there. Let me put it this see way: if it works. we don't get paid to do this, right? Mm-hmm. But. We could be getting paid to do this. And if this didn't happen, we wouldn't be having a whole five-minute spiel about it. Fair. Yeah, which fair. means less money for us that we could theoretically be making. Sponsor mm-hmm. us, please. Um, uh, not that we'd get it anyway. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but but you know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. it's like I, I, I think I'm going to say I'm opposed to that. I'm mm-hmm. opposed to officials being like robots. Automated. Yeah. 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 I mean, I agree. Mainly, you know, I mean, it would put me out of a job, so that's why I'm going to agree. But um, <laughs> still, be a third base ump or something. Come on, yeah. you don't, you don't play <laughs> well, see, but... like that's the thing. Like, if you do automated strike zones, you have to do automated field umpires as well. Because I, mean, I would, I mean, I'd say why? Why would you not? That's what I'm saying. You know what like, I mean? so, like, because, like, I mean, what you're there to like see if he swung all the way through and yeah, and you got yeah. different things. Yeah, so but like, like, like all that could be animated too. Like, if you if you cross a certain point. Like, mm-hmm. on this animated whatever that's seeing, you know, you will be called a strike. And puts people out of the job. It takes away the human element. I don't – more computers does not equal good. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's my take. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, we have Anthony Rizzo being mm-hmm. our home run leader so far this year with eight uh, oh. through the first month of play. Almost the first month of play, we still got a couple of days left. Um, I mean, he's been having, on fire. Yeah, multi-homer games as well. Uh, 20th of his career 
multi-homer game. So, I mean, he's looking good. I mean, but you beat the Orioles, though. Out of all, you know, it's, yeah, you're the home run leader now, but it was the Orioles. Like, it was, you know, Baltimore. Like, who? I'm just, like, my thing is that they were trying so hard to get rid of him. They mm-hmm. wanted Freddie Freeman. They wanted Matt Olson. They wanted all these different people other than Anthony. And then, like, it was kind of like, oh, we're stuck with you now. And he's like, all right, I'll prove why I'm here. I mean, that's a great, like, worst-case scenario. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's shocking to me with the rest of that roster that it's Anthony Rizzo. Like, they got some some bombers on that squad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would assume it would be Aaron Judge just because the man yes. is, like, 6'8 and hits absolute nukes when he does. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Anthony Rizzo's been around a while. He knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on, the Reds. Oh, the it's Reds. an absolute sad start to the season. They break an 11 game losing streak, though. You know, congrats. We have three wins. Like, come on, <laughs> it's not, not doing much better. Oh man, like, Yay. it's one like what it went loss, win, win, loss, followed by ten more losses. Yep. Then a win, and then a loss. So they've not it's had bad. a good month. Where you know. I think Anthony Rizzo's having a great first month. The Reds are having an absolute terrible first month. Hey, Cincinnati has a baseball team. But the only thing good about Cincinnati is the fans. Yeah, that's true. Making some amazing catches. I mean, better than the game. That's the only thing we hear about now is just a fan catching a ball, foul ball with a baby in its hand. Feeding the baby. Feeding the baby. Never lost control of the bottle. Exactly. One hand Perfect grab. accuracy. Like, I mean, it was sign him to the team. Come on, outfield yeah. right there. <laughs> well, I think the Reds' problem is not necessarily defensively because we've talked about Hunter Green. Mm-hmm. Hunter Green's still having an incredible season. They can't hit. No. They can't score runs. They are mm-hmm. negative forty-seven in run differential. So until they start scoring, they're gonna keep losing games. Mm-hmm. I mean, like. I don't know what is their. I want to look at their. I mean, right now they're tied for 29th in runs with only 49, 30th in on base percentage, 30th in slugging percentage, 29th in batting average. So I mean, they're struggling all around. They're bottom of the the league in pretty much every category. You can't win games like that. It's, yeah. I don't know. Not at all. Uh, but moving on uh, to college baseball. Louisville still doing yep. big things. They are uh, 16th in the nation still. Picking up some wins. Yep. yep. They had a they just had a big uh, series against a uh, ranked opponent in North Carolina. North Carolina State. North Carolina State. Yep. NC State. So yeah, I mean, uh, what they they win two out of three of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, they're looking good. We're getting closer and closer to that Louisville Eastern game. Uh, it's still going to be a good one in my opinion because. Eastern picked up their fifth win in a row last night over Moorhead State. I mean, the Cardinals are looking good. Mm-hmm. And I think there's one particular – it's not – I mean, as a whole, they're doing amazing. The pitching staff's doing really good. They're hitting the ball. There's one person we got to talk about. Will Bryan. He's been doing good. It's not even Will Bryan, even though he – He got the save. He, like, he broke the save yeah. record for Eastern. But I want to talk about Kendall. Oh, yeah. Kendall Yule. Mm -hmm. My boy Kendall Yule. Yeah. Named College Baseball Player of the Week last week for going 12 of 15 on the weekend series and having five home runs. No, he's ridiculous. He's 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 insane. He keeps Mm -hmm. playing this well. He's going to be playing somewhere bigger than our pay grade. Louisville, Kentucky. Somebody's going to be calling him up. Someone will call him up if he keeps this this Mm -hmm. hot streak. Um, EKU Baseball, it's been a roller coaster of a ride, man. Like, we, we went on that 11 tw- 12 game win streak, lost five in a row, picked back up five. So, yeah. hopefully, that five game skid was just that. It was just a skid. You know, mm-hmm. maybe we, if we lose, we can do what we did a couple weekends ago, actually, when we, we picked up a win and a couple losses to Central Arkansas. So, hopefully, hopefully, we can keep turning it around. Exactly. I mean, 18 and four at home, mm-hmm. they're dominating. The home field advantage there, which is really good. Twelve and six in conference play, looking really good. What's our away record? <clears throat> nine and nine. Nine and nine. It's not that's, the best. That's where we're. That's where we're yeah. struggling. Out of thirteen losses, none of them come on the road. So that's where, a lot of them. You know, but we've got like for us not being too fantastic on the road, we still have some big wins on the road. We it's have, true. We yeah. I think UK. we we swept Jacksonville State on the road. 
Yep. Beat UK at UK. Mm-hmm. Got some wins uh, at North Alabama, Austin P. Yeah, yeah. We won at huge. Marshall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, so, huge wins. And see, here's the thing about pitching, too. You said it before. It doesn't feel like, yeah, Will Bryan is the guy. Like, that is our – but, like, there's not one pitcher that we've, that we've been using that I have felt, like, low confidence in. Like, obviously, you have your range. Which one? I'm not going to throw my man on blast, but there's one. <laughs> I mean, maybe very rarely we've seen this guy, but like, like you, I was gonna give credit to our pitching staff. Like, like oh, our pitching staff. There's not fantastic. a lot of guys. Good. There's not mm-hmm. a lot of guys that have gone up that I've been like, okay, we're gonna have a long inning. Like, like we're gonna have an intermediate to short inning. Like every time. And so, like our pitching staff has done really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you your one guy. I don't know who. I can't give you the name off the top of my head. Uh, I'll tell you later. All right, that's fair. <laughs> okay. But like I'm saying, our pitching staff has done amazing, and. Yep. Well, Brian is our guy, but people behind him have been playing really well too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nico. Logan, yeah, Logan's been really good. Thomason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nico Leon Tarakis is coming well out of the pen. Yeah, yeah. insane. Yeah. That man um, moves when he gets on the plate. He is he's not only throwing heaters, but he he does not take long to set up and throw another one. Oh no, mm-hmm. it is. Like he, yeah, he's, he yeah. he gets rocking and rolling. He yeah. he moves. Um, I will say though, like our our starters have haven't been going like very long in the games, but they're getting what. They need to be done. You know, they're mm-hmm. getting that four or five innings, and then our bullpen is shutting them down. Which I think, like you talked about, we talked about Will Bryan and the saves. I just think we're not burning him out because he's not coming in having to save us every game. He's not mm-hmm. coming in. Like, you know, we're he's not something we have to tap to all the time. Yeah, He's mm-hmm. something that every now and then we have to tap to, and then other than that, he can play whenever he needs to be played. So it's like, I love it. Like, I, just, yeah. I love the balance that this team has, especially from last year, too. Like the the we had a rough year, so mm-hmm. to come out this year, um, have as many transfers and come in as we did, and to be this consistent and this just well based in what we're trying to do, says a lot about Coach Prothrow. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, they're doing a lot better compared to last year. Like you're talking about, I mean, it was weird that softball was really good last year. Now softball's struggling this year, and baseball's good. For everything like we've said, flipped, yeah. everything we've said about baseball is yep. what softball has problems with. They do not exactly. have a bullpen. Yeah, like they they cannot they can't. Even if our pitchers are playing well, defensively we're bad. We mm-hmm. can't we can't string three outs in a row to save our lives. And yep. we've only got two or three people that can consistently hit, and that being Carly Robinson, uh, Sammy or uh, yeah, Sammy Miller, and who there's a third one. Jasmine Miller's pretty good. Yeah, ja- mm-hmm. I'll say Jasmine Miller. Yeah, though outside of those three, it's hard pressed to find someone that's really consistent that yep. hits like yep. those three do. Um, you know, you want to talk about some struggles though. UK baseball is not. Yeah. In the best of place right now. Um, still have a winning record, 23 and 18. Lost five of their last seven, though. Mm-hmm. So it's not looking good. It's it's not looking good for them. Um, they did win their last game, so good for them. Uh, they played, let me find it. They played Dayton. Yeah, Dayton. I'm they won 12 to 1. I was say, they, they, he's Dayton. Like, come on. Uh, yeah, it's not the best team there. They did pick up a win over Vanderbilt, so you know, like, good for them. They but. got blanked in that first game of that se- of that weekend series, though. <laughs> yep, that was tough, though. I mean, between having Louisville and then three games against Vandy, all topped, you know, tier teams there ranked. That's hard. So I mean, they needed a win, and Dayton was the easy win for them to get. Yep. But now they have Florida, and then the biggest thing is Tennessee coming up. Like that's, that's yeah. gonna be hard for them. Yeah, Just but looking at UK, yep. There was a season series before Louisville and Vanderbilt. Missouri, we should be able to beat. And win. Missouri, is such we a should, yeah. We should be able to beat Missouri in a in a series. We mm-hmm. should be able to like we lost a series as against Texas A and M. Those are teams that were we were projected to be. Kentucky, mm-hmm. Kentucky should have won. They haven't yep. won a series since uh, March, the weekend of March twenty sixth against Georgia. Very sad. That's what Jeez, I'm looking at. Yeah. So over, it's been a month since they've won a series. And then before that, they lost a series to Arkansas. And I know Arkansas is pretty good, but still. They beat High Point. Good for them. We there you go. Beat yeah. High Point. Yeah, it's just, it's been a bad go for the Wildcats. Yep. Bad go. So hopefully you pick those around and yeah. some good things. But yeah, Louisville, EKU baseball coming up. That's going to be the big, big matchup there. We'll see what the date is. May 17th on a Tuesday. So I think that will be the best one to keep an eye out for. And uh, that's all the time we have for baseball this week. Uh, next is coming up is college basketball. Next we have college hoops. Uh, first on our agenda is going to be Mark Emmert stepping down, giving his 14th month notice. Not two weeks, 14 months. He's done. Yep. President of the NCAA, 
we talked about it before. I mean, he's been terrible. Oh, he's awful. been in shambles the whole time. Um, Think so. about how far the NCAA is behind the eight ball with everything. They mm-hmm. fought the NIL, which everyone approved of. It, uh, it's just... This guy is just the epitome of selfish. Yeah. Like he, everything he did was to the detriment or to just everything against what these athletes in the universities are for. And so, yeah, I, uh, good riddance in the nicest way I could possibly say it. Is there a nice way to say good riddance? <laughs> yeah, I just did. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it wasn't like, it wasn't that it was like, you know, he was just screwing like one portion of like, it was all. It was the entire mm-hmm. entirety of the NCAA, right? Just think about how we view the NCAA. And it, was it 12 or 14 years he was there? Since, uh, no, since 2010. So 12 years. Yeah. yeah. So, so he was the president for 12 years. Everything yeah. that we've said in the last 12 years about the NCAA mm-hmm. can directly correlate back to this guy. So, yeah. yeah. I, uh, the rest of the NCAA better get a, like, get a foothold on this thing because there is a solid mm-hmm. chance in the next decade that if it doesn't, there might be some shifts I don't know what that could mean, but like, like AAU, we might get we there might not be an NCAA. Anymore, what I'm saying, is what I'm like, saying. we might have like an AAU league or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. like like we might have like more closely resembling what it was back in the '70s, where there was just like the Big East did what they did, the Pac-12 did what they did. I know they weren't Pac-12; it was like the West Conference or something. But mm-hmm. the point is, the point stands is that there might be some shift in dynamics if the NCAA doesn't fix it. That's a good point. Speaking of the Big East. Ryan, ah. what a great segue. Jay Wright retires from Villanova. That was shocking. I was. That yeah. was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't I don't know why he retired. Um He's twenty one years. I mean, he's in um, his he's almost sixty or is right at sixty and he's up there, yeah. Uh, Listen, I mean, all I'm gonna say, number one is congrats, coach. Enjoy the Bahamas. Enjoy Hawaii. Oh yeah. Like he what he did at Villanova. He took them from being an average, you know, kind of like once off in the tournament kind of team to a blue blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a perennial, like you could make an argument for a dynasty type. Yes. Um, Maybe not full fledged, but um, I do want to say this. I love how Jay Wright did this versus how Coach K did this. Mm -hmm. Because Coach K made it all about himself by announcing his intentions before the season. Mm -hmm. He made it his, his kind of retirement tour, whereas Jay Wright silently after the season you knew, yeah i had no idea but i feel like coach k though had a longer and kind of more successful like career than jay wright i feel like jay wright just more recently the past five to ten years was like oh he is a great coach now oh no you're right you know what i'm saying so i feel like coach k i guess deserved that full season of like no he didn't about it no no, no this, this isn't even no, come on this isn't no, even coming from I, stuff this like is a that. basketball this fan this isn't bitter yeah. because like listen this is like, a basketball I, fan. I can do this thing to where i can separate myself and have an unbiased opinion yeah. So coach K is the best coach of all time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here's the deal. I felt as if he took away from that team because he always went on. He went mm-hmm. on and on about the pressure that team felt. The pressure that team felt. The mm-hmm. pressure. He put that pressure there. That That's was his true. doing because that was yep. the last Coach K led team. And he goes on and on about pressure as if he's not the one putting it on them. So like I had a problem with that. Like you can call it biased, whatever. It's not. That's not like me trying to hate on K for being for my personal fa- like biases. Because like I said, K is the best coach of all time. I respect him. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. The way Jay Wright did it. Yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make a difference because they're both retiring at the same time. Coach K could yeah. have easily done this. He could have easily said, "This is about the kids. This mm-hmm. is about us winning a championship, not about me." In the retire post, you didn't mm-hmm. need that whole going away party. You didn't need it. You don't. Yeah. You are a national championship winning coach. Why do you want this? You're the best coach of all time. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that you've done that, mine's biased. I hate Coach K. <laughs> um, it's biased and unbiased. I, I like. Okay, I, I don't hate him. I don't hate anyone because that's not nice. But he's like the fact that he went on this whole sh- you know spiel for the entire season and then lost his last home game lost his last game to UNC. Like, this script that was wrote for him of like, oh, you know, I'm going to beat this person for the last time and this person for the last Mm -hmm. time, just got thrown right back in his face. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely loved every second of it. I became a UNC fan for about three hours. I would have liked to have seen K go out on top because you don't see that very often. But, like... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I... 
I know you wouldn't. But the, the the point I'm trying to make here is that like if this was just if we didn't know it was his last year, if he just said afterwards I'm retiring and mm-hmm. this is about them, I would have been so pro Coach K at the end of that. I would Absolutely. Been so happy. But the fact that he made it about that the way he did and yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, speaking of uh, the Carolinas, Zach, what do you think about Caleb Love returning to North Carolina? That's great. I mean, they need him. That's that's why they were so good this year. Is because they had him. So I'm all for it. He could have gone to the NBA. He would have gone high in the NBA draft for sure. But I think it's good. I like that college players are staying longer than like one or two years. The mm-hmm. one and done stuff. I hate that. I wish they could stay all or four the years. None and done. The yeah, none, none and done. None you ain't play done. a game and go to the NBA. Like, don't get me started. It's college basketball. Like, enjoy it while you have it mm-hmm. because the NBA is not gonna last forever. So. You know, you'll be in the NBA for a few years. And I don't even, like. I think, I think UNC only lost Brady Manning because he mm-hmm. graduated. He legit had no time left. Yeah. Yep. So um, like, they're gonna be good next year. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like they're. I think Vegas has them as the title favorites. Um, which rightfully so. Um, but one of those, the point you made about them returning and you love it, is mainly because of the NIL, and this mm-hmm. perfectly translates to our other big story. Nigel Pack, former Kansas State guard, transfers to Miami and instantly gets a massive $800,000 NIL deal with Life Wallet. That's crazy. This man's making how much? <laughs> 800000 Six figures. And I, re- I think Probably I saw somewhere that he's, he's getting a car, too. Oh, jeez. So this kid— I mean, People like, won't get to go to the NBA now. Just go to college for four years, get a good NIL yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. Get a degree— in a degree, oh, and then you're set, you know. Dude, yeah. You don't. It doesn't have to be for four. Mm-hmm. You you commit. Oh yeah. Your freshman year, you you redshirt just because. Mm-hmm. You know, rack in that money. Five years, you've made millions upon millions of dollars. You're one of the best I've ever played in that gym. Yep. I like it, but I also I, I put this in here because I really I wanted to start this conversation. Is nil in their perfect, or at perfect in their current state good for college basketball, college sports in general? In yeah. your person, a person. Yes, but if you're using it as a recruiting tool, no. Which so is like, exactly what's happened. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I think, like, yes, we needed NIL in some fashion. But the fact that, like, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember his name. But there was a quarterback, a five-star quarterback, committed to USC. Out of nowhere, decommits from USC, goes to Tennessee, signs like a million-dollar deal. Mm-hmm. Like before he's even stepped on campus, right? Mm-hmm. You have to like in my mind. You have to think that's you know you're not paying players, but you're recruiting with nil. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, I, it was just a big deal though. Like, I mean, it's good for the athletes to make that money. But at the same time, it's like it's kind of concerning sometimes. Like these, these they're eighteen year old kids out here making triple di- like triple figures. Like that's yeah, kind of outright. It's kind of crazy, but at the same time, like. They're that good of a player that have that have you know such a big push for these companies. All power to them. You yeah, know? I I just don't know how you limit this because like mm-hmm. I feel like is there a lawful way to ban businesses from talking to recruits pre commitment? Like is that a thing? Like if your school gets caught Oops, having businesses yeah. talking to potential recruits, the school gets punished. Um, slash like that scholarships red- redacted or something, whatever, banned from postseason. Um, or like. Oh, this is not feasible, but do you have like an NCAA like representative at all these recruiting events? Yeah. To like make sure like that that's just not feasible. Well, here's my question: mm-hmm. Do you like just kind of like get away from the business side of like like let's say a player can like sing or play the guitar or mm-hmm. wants to make a T-shirt? I think that's fine, you know, because like we had last season we had Marshall's O line Will Ulmer. He was a singer. He'd go play to bars, but like. Before he played under an alias, and then he, you know, and I went through. So now he got to play under his own name. Right. I don't see a problem with that. You know, like if you have a like talent other than what your sport is, why can't you make money on it? Yeah. Or if you're like mm-hmm. famous, like make a T-shirt, people will buy it. Yeah. I don't think eighteen-year-old kids should be like, hey, if you come here, we'll give you a car. See, I don't think yeah. I don't, but that's not our conversation. Like, if you have your own revenue as in T-shirts, or you're making like you have a talent, you're getting but I, paid it for, wasn't allowed before diff- this. I know, I know, mm-hmm. and that's yes, that's true. But the conversation is is like they're essentially signing contracts. 
Like they're getting paid all this money. Like like I'm talking like their talent is their sport and life wallet is giving you eight hundred grand mm -hmm. to go to school there. You know what I mean? Like like is that good for the sport? And I know you said no. I think no as well. I don't know how you limit it. I don't know what what how, I don't hard. I don't see a feasible way. Like like a I worry that it's going to become like because we've already got this huge like divide between power five and mid major. Mm -hmm. What major business is going to fund Wichita State? No, you know it's not, not happening. Or EKU, like exactly. You look at the small Apollo's places pizza. we got. Yeah, Apollo's Pizza and some small you know barstool sports and stuff will sponsor yeah. spend anybody. But yeah, they don't. They won't it's, get the big deals. It's sad. Like mm -hmm. it's and so I. There needs to be some sort of protection, some sort of gateway, something that <clears throat> keeps these businesses from waiting till after the commitment. Mm -hmm. Because that's another thing too is that these college kids are making commitments to places they probably don't fit in and will hate because of a paycheck. Because of money. And that that's it's, something that needs yeah. to be limited. And there's a lot of money going around. Olivia D um, Dunny from LSU Gymnastics. She's getting more than one million dollars. Yeah. For an active and it's gymnastics and you're getting over a million dollars what's wrong with gymnastics zach well i'm saying like <laughs> that's you not something think, you usually hear you, yeah, hear, I, yeah. I, I, you I would know. usually like it's football because like this football player from ohio state uh 1.4 million it's just crazy See, like, uh, I'm, I'm okay with them getting that money post yeah. like like i am i love the nil i think this is beautiful <laughs> if you're gonna get paid make yeah. as much as you can but you should already be committed oh like yeah. it shouldn't be like oh if you don't go to my school i'm not gonna pay you it should mm -hmm. be my brand likes your brand. And if it just so happens that you go to a place and then that brand's like, oh, yeah, you've already committed here. You like it here. Then I'm going to – that's fine. Yeah. But my, my the point is you said recruiting. They're using it as recruiting tools, and I hate that. Like I, that needs to be, mm -hmm. like I said, like gatekeeped in some way. There, there needs to be some sort of limitation. But some of these schools – we're talking about smaller schools getting deals. Look at Doug from St. Peter's. Buffalo Wild Wings. I mean, if they do well, they'll get they'll eventually in yeah, deals think about, will happen. Think about where he was to get that. And that's the thing. If they do well yeah. and get that exposure, then the deals will come along with it. So well, we're not gonna get recruits that way. That's post, you know, like, yeah. like that's just because that guy played well. Because he did so well. Yeah. yeah. Like like that's not gonna help us in the long run. Mm -hmm. It helps Doug. It'll but, help him. But, but look at where Doug is now. He's at Bryant. Yeah. Like it didn't matter. You know, like all that did was help him get away from mm -hmm. St. Peter's. Yeah. And Bryant is bigger, so it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. It can lead, man, it could lead Bryant to more deals too, because they'd be like, he's Buffalo Wild Wings, dude. It might, might lead the other players there. But what if Bryant deals. goes 14 and 19? He'll you get know what Apollo's I mean? pizza. Like they'll get Apollo. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, like it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. You know? Yeah. Like I don't know. Oh, man. So there's a lot, yeah, a lot of deals going around, but we'll see. I think uh, uh, we should go ahead and move on. Uh, I want our – Derek, you have separated yourself as the Kentucky guy. Oh, yeah. I'll take it. Um, mm -hmm. And I respect it. Yep. Um, there's some big news down here for our Wildcat section, I guess. Wildcat go ahead and hit us with it. Reigning National Player of the Year, unanimously voted. Oscar Shibway coming back for a senior season. I love it. I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. He's uh. It was funny because like in his announcement that he's come back, he said, "I want to beat St. Peter's." Yeah. <laughs> so if we don't play St. Peter's this year, I will be so upset because that man deserves everything he asked for. It's a shell mm -hmm. of St. Peter's, though. I don't care, true. man. St. Peter's is still the name. That's all. I, that's all I care about. Thugs. Beat don't them and beat Bryant. Beat both the teams. Exactly. And then you're okay. You know Give what? me yeah. Seton Hall and Bryant. I want to beat Shaheem Holloway. There you go. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, you know, Severe's coming back. Um, Jacob Tombin is rumored to come back. Uh, we got some, you know, new people coming in. I think Kentucky will be fine. I think they need to get one more shooter because all you have right now is C.J. Fredrickson. Mm -hmm. So if you get another shooter out of the portal or a commitment, I think we'll be fine and dandy. Otherwise, I think we'll be relying on C.J. Fredrickson to – or C.J. Fredericks to carry us, and that's mm -hmm. not good. But also in here, Summit League Player of the Year, Baylor Shearman. Shearman is in the portal. That man's unreal. Yeah. He's, he's a, a great shooter. We talked about shooters. This man shot 46, almost 47% from three last Jeez. year. He averages over 41% from the field. And uh, he also led that team in rebounding with just under eight. 
So uh, he's a guy, Kansas, That's West Virginia, one. all of them have been. You know what's funny, though? I see him fitting better in the systems of the other two I just said than Kentucky. Probably. I really like yeah. he, In West Virginia or Kansas, he fits in perfectly. So mm -hmm. I don't know if he goes to Kentucky. Uh, but they reached out. Nice. Mm -hmm. NIL. Exactly. Depends. Better NIL deals. Depends. We'll recruit. Mm -hmm. Will there be more NIL opportunities in Lexington versus Morgantown and Lawrence? Probably. I can see what's Kansas. in Lawrence? Yeah. Well, Kansas, you just have the name. It's yeah. like. What's in what's in Lawrence? The birthplace of basketball. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Okay, but I mean business wise. Is that man gonna make a I'm million sure dollars there? I am mm -hmm. more than positive there's more than seven figures in some company that wants to throw at Kansas. I promise. Mm -hmm. Like Morgantown, I could see, you know, whatever. Because West Virginia can be kind of iffy. Mm -hmm. Lexington is much better than Morgantown. But Lawrence as a town is like, yeah, sure, whatever. But like that's Kansas, man. Okay, but here's my question. What's near Lawrence? Is there anything near Lawrence? Like, because we have Louisville. We Go have to Franklin. maps. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there, yep. there are other big cities near Lexington that, like, that's true. he can it's also big, pull from. Yeah, big companies and things. But, or you can have a company like Life Wallet or something, Rand, you know, some big. That's still Miami, though. You like, know. Oh, wow. Okay, I, I don't have access to maps. I'm not going to go why into why I don't have access to maps, because <laughs> that's a long story. Uh, itself. But, uh, yeah. I my, got it. Thank I'll, you. I'll pull it up. Where My computer blew up, so I'm borrowing this one. <laughs> Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, okay. Well, they're, you know, they're right next to Kansas City. So oh, we wow. won't talk oh, about that. Yeah. Okay? Wow. What do you know? <laughs> I, I still want him in Lexington, though. I know that would be nice. He's I know good. you will be a good asset. I want him just as bad as I don't want Darren Waller. Oh, here we go. Darren Waller. <laughs> Darren Waller, go to Green Bay, please. <laughs> In the comments below, if you think Darren Waller is overrated, say so. I didn't say he was overrated. I just didn't if want to. If you him. think he shouldn't be in Green Bay, say so. There you go. But if you think Green Bay fans are just unappreciative, say so as let well. Let us know. Let, like yep. the video and let us know. Yep. Thank you. I swear, I'm going to get like Mercedes down here. Derek's so ungrateful. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Mercedes Curtis, EP. There you go. What, what, are we, what is it? Assistant Features. Assistant Features. There, there you go. go. Right. And check out, I'm talking about the EP, check out easternprogress.com. Give a quick plug to the progress. Follow us there on our social media and then at SportsCP on Twitter for all EKU sports. All right. Yep. Uh, that is all the time we have this week. So we've wrapped up another episode. We have one more. One up. or two. Uh, it depends on our time finals mm -hmm. week. But, yeah, we, we got a, hopefully a couple. Um, yeah. Yep. Hopefully a couple, and then uh, you'll have to miss us until the fall. But it'll be unfortunate. We missed two of us. Yeah, I'll be all gone. We're losing our. We're losing Zach. All right, but uh, appreciate you hanging around, hanging with us for this hour ish, and uh, we'll see you next week.